game compilations have a knack for reviving some of the most forgotten projects in gaming history. It's an opportunity to give a financial failure a second chance, presenting ideas to a brand new audience that might like them more than their parents did. Which is exactly how I found out about Scooter Shooter. Released in 1985 after Gradius, most people know it for its surprise appearance in Microsoft Game Room, a virtual arcade full of emulated games. Imagine my surprise when I found out this was one of the first competitive shoot-'em-ups, if not THE first! But that's not the only cool and unusual idea introduced here. You, and an opponent if you have one, play as the creatively named Mr. or Mrs. Two cybernetic jumpsuit-wearing warriors that are, you guessed it, scooting and shooting their way through perilous futuristic settings. Obviously, this is far evolved from the whack-a-mole games we saw in the early 80s. Just like its sister game, Gradius, the innovation is immediately noticeable. It's novel being able to go head-to-head -head in a genre dominated by lonely galactic adventures. But you have to unpack everything from the level design to the mechanics to really find out if a shoot-'em-up stands the test of time. Scooter Shooter held up well. Why is that? Because Konami remembered you need a healthy helping of strategy on top of captivating presentation to make a great shoot-'em-up. The two major building blocks that every game should expand upon. The fundamentals that make Gradius fun. Talk is cheap, though. The best way for me to sell you on Scooter Shooter is to take you through what an average level of this game has to offer, dissecting specific scenes to contrast them with your average shooting game. Scooter Shooter defied convention in a good way right from the start when you notice you can actually move backwards. Many side-scrolling ship shooters force you to move along at a fixed pace. Here, you have the sweet freedom of taking your time, allowing you to approach any wave of enemies as cautiously or as recklessly as you feel like. The average player won't be able to just sit at the start of the level farming extra lives either. Stalling way too long causes waves of aggressive enemies to hunt you down. While speedruns outside of racing games weren't popular in 1985, speed control gives Scooter Shooter very high potential as a speed game, especially when it's layered on top of everything else this game has going for it. Secondly, there's the matter of the scooter itself. There's a good chance you'll avoid enemy contact entirely in level 1, it's supposed to be an easy-going introduction. But once you reach the showdown, you'll definitely notice bullets hitting your scooter aren't hurting you. Shields haven't been a new concept since Asteroids Deluxe from 1980. However, how many games can you name off the top of your head where the shield is built directly into your vehicle? Half of your front and your entire bottom are protected by your indestructible scooter. Which is great for defense, especially when the narrow corridors in the level design demand it. But it's also just as great of a weapon as your gun. Is that turret at the bottom of the screen impossible to reach with your gun? Slam into it and show it who's boss. About to be sandwiched by bullets coming from the left and the right? Slam into that enemy beneath you to make an escape route. Those are just the basic options WITHOUT power-ups. At set points in the stages, Power-ups are dispensed. You don't have to take the first upgrade you see. Shooting the power-up changes it to one of five selectable upgrades, rotating in order. P gives you a pitiful amount of points, but the other four make up the meat and potatoes that make this game rich. S increases your speed for the remainder of the level. R gives you four rockets that swivel across the screen, usually decimating everything in sight. B gives you a barrier, an extra layer of protection that protects your entire character, and W warps you ahead in the level, but also clears out every enemy on the screen. It was meant to ensure you don't teleport right into an enemy after you warp, but you can use that to your advantage anywhere in the game. You might not be able to use these weapons everywhere, but you still have the power of choice whenever power-ups are offered, and they're often placed right in front of the patterns you need them for. 
With every power-up having a purpose somewhere in your assault, Scooter Shooter does an outstanding job bringing out the player's brain power, just like Gradius. You won't ever be bored trying to figure out the best ways to deal with the enemy waves given to you. The power-ups appearing in designated locations also has the sweet side effect of making death relatively painless. Sizable chunks of the levels are designed around not having any power-ups. Worst case, you lose your speed-ups, making the checkpoints slightly harder, but nowhere near the extent of other Konami shooters. All these possibilities and the game showing a shred of mercy combined make Scooter Shooter an incredibly fair game. You will never die outside of your control, even when the game's difficulty starts ramping up later. Meaning that if you really know what you're doing, you can rack up those extra lives to run a marathon as long as you can survive. Even after you beat all four levels, it keeps looping as long as you have lives, in classic arcade fashion, giving you tremendous value for your quarters, and respecting your skill. I rest my case. The four stages are exemplary, representing the best shoot-em-ups have to offer. It's a shame I can't hold the conclusions of these levels to the same level of praise. The screens merge into a single large battleground, one's Mr. and Mrs. Me. You're automatically turned to face the opponent Street Fighter style. You have your gun, of course, but the game tries to make it more than a mindless button mashing contest by giving you other ways to attack your opponent. Hitting the orbs causes drones to shoot waves of bullets the other way. But these attacks don't work. You can just deflect all of them with your scooter by sitting in the corner the entire match. If you stall long enough, enemies will come along and hurl walls of bullets at both players, making you move out of the corner for 10 seconds. The time over mechanics aren't enough to prevent matches from devolving into who can press the button faster. It's quite a contrast to how much planning's needed to succeed in the levels. While this part of the game might be a miss, the inspiration for future games to take note was there. I can see something like Toho 3 or Twinkle Star Sprites taking lots of notes from Scooter Shooter, since player versus player was a novel idea. To end the critique off, let's admire something that's good across the entire game. The presentation. Gradius had weird, yet excellently illustrated locales to fly through, with the Easter Island Moai stage being the most recognized. Scooter Shooter follows the same principle of having exotic locations brought to life by pretty good graphics. You start off flying through a wasteland, beautifully illuminated by the sunrise, plunge into the depths of a cave, pelfer an Egyptian pyramid, and end in a mechanical base for a tradition creating a good variety of scenes to fight through. The backdrops have no connection to one another, so the order is weird and jarring. But it doesn't have to be coherent. I'm positive these level themes were chosen because they're cool and adventurous. However, it is fun to speculate why we're fighting in these places. This could either be an enormous sunset covered by clouds, or a nuclear mushroom cloud. We'll never know. But I'm sure tons of people came up with their own theories, just like the designers of Gradius intended. Then you have Scooter Shooter's music, which is the best note to end on. I don't even have to describe it, you should listen to it yourself. I wish I knew who composed this soundtrack. They have a great sense of rhythm and composition. And with that, it's time to award a grade. I'm giving Scooter Shooter an A. The competitive aspects aren't thoughtful enough for me to think it's groundbreaking, but this is still a fantastic game you should go out of your way to play when you get the chance. That'll be enough for today. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell right next to it. Or consider donating through my Patreon in my description. I crank these reviews out once a month.